Okay, hello everyone. Hope you all had a great Christmas. It's almost the new year. And I will try to keep this video as short as I can. Um, the ISO is now ready for download. I will post a link in the description where it can be downloaded. But before I get to all that, I need to apologize. If I happen to cough or anything during this video, one of the one of the greatest gifts that I got on Christmas Day was either the flu or pneumonia, and I'm still sick. <clears throat> so you guys bear with me. Um, again, like I said, if I happen to cough or something, don't hold it against me. And also, I want to say that I realize there's like a background hum on my videos. And I don't know how to fix that. I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully you can overlook that. So, as I was saying, the ISO for Mio Rolling is now ready for download. And we're going to look at it real quick here in VirtualBox. So, let's get started. Alright, here we go. I'll put this on full screen and cover up my face. Now one thing I want to point out, out of respect for Terry and Nutix, I left the grub screen like it is. When you, when or if you install Mio Rolling, this is the grub screen that you will have on the system. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and try this live, okay? And also, I will. And I've already tried this one time and I deleted all the files because I hope I can recreate what I do to show how to get this to show a full screen in VirtualBox for those who may want to try it in VirtualBox. So we're loading it up. There's all those wonderful virtual box messages again if you saw previous videos of mine I admitted that I'm no virtual box guru and I'm still learning how to use virtual box <laughs> come on now I wanted to show this whole process instead of having it already booted up just so you'll kind of get a an indication of what uh, you'll see if you download it and try it yourself. Come on, baby. All right. So I'm gonna choose United States. This always takes a moment, so hang in there with me. It only takes a little bit. This is exactly what you'll have to do if you try this live. You'll do. You'll have to do this exact same thing. So just be prepared. You know, uh, on Mio Linux and a lot of other distros, you have to enter a password. But that's one of the great things about Nutix. You have to do the same thing, but you get to choose your own username and your own password for the live session. All right, choose my keyboard layout, which is US. Use the space bar to mark that, and I want to configure the uh, Ethernet adapter. Hit OK. That's already marked for auto, so I'll hit OK. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we're going to enter a temporary username. I always use the same thing for my temporary and when I actually install this. You can do it however you want. 
enter a password same thing I always use the same one while I'm testing it out in the live session and when I install it now I did put this in full screen and we'll actually have to log in so you'll need to remember your temporary username and password alright it's got me listed as Dan and the password now what I discovered come on baby alright what I discovered see how this is not full screen even though the window is set on full screen I discovered this by accident if I log out just log out and log back in it'll go full screen look whoa yeah there we go and now we're full screen alright so this is what you're gonna be greeted with um, I want to point out again that out of the box in the live session the applications menu is not adapting to the chosen icon theme you see there's no icons on these categories and there's not icons in all of the actual applications and you'll notice it does the same here on the start menu Okay, so all we need to do, go to customize look and feel, and I use Arc Dark as the default, so just click on that, or click on any one you want. Of course now the icon theme is set for Papyrus Dark, so you might have to change the icon theme too if you use a light theme, but just click on one and apply and we should now have everything working right we have our icons and the menu adapted alright now what I want to point out and I'm sorry if I'm a little boring but like I said I'm sick if you open up your file manager you'll see here that I've included the release notes alright so what I'm gonna do I'm going to go over these release notes. Uh, I may not cover each and every one very in depth because I don't want this uh, video to last forever. But what we're going to do, I'm going to go over these and just try to touch on them as best as I can, as quickly as I can, just to keep you guys from getting bored, okay? So let me open those up. And I'm going to go ahead and close out that all right now, now I want to point out to this is not what they will look like they won't go from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen this is virtual box and the first thing I do is I think uh, Terry and give him a little bit of uh, applause for what he's done give a quick intro to what Mio rolling is about and I give a quick overview of what I just talked about how to get the theme and the icons working alright installation tips the first thing we're going to read about is the installation tips so let's go on down and I'm not going to read over these uh, I would encourage anyone that wants to possibly try this out to please download I included uh, the release notes on the site where you can download the ISO I would encourage you to please download those release notes and read over them because there's a lot of useful information here that's going to help you alright so if you could do that I would appreciate it um, I'm not going to go through everything you can do that but what I do want to point out is to please 
use a wired connection for the live session and during installation and after the first boot. That's very important. The system will automatically connect to a, a wired connection, but there are some issues with wireless. That's easily overcome. I explained that here in the release notes. That's easily overcome if you want to use wireless after you install the system. Okay, so please do that. Use a wired connection for the live session, during installation, and at first boot. At the end of this video, I'm going to do an installation, so I will try to point out some of the little idiosyncrasies about all of this, okay? Um, you may also want to change the terminal that's used by the menu. Um, I have it set to use Xterm. You might want to change it to LX Terminal. That's what I use as the default terminal myself. However, I had to set it to Xterm in order for the installer to work. For some reason, if I set the terminal to LX terminal, the installer still wouldn't open. So I have it set for X term. I have the instructions here. Very easy, very easy to change it over to LX terminal, or if you want to install a different terminal and change it to that. All right. Okay, the menus. All right. I've included four menus. Now this is very important. I have two open box menus. One with icons, which is what it comes with out of the box, and one without icons. And I'm not going to waste time. Again, I don't want to bore I don't want to bore people. <laughs> so, I have instructions here on what you need to do if you want to use the menu that does not have icons. All right, it's very easy, very simple to do. Just make sure that you read this section right here. Be aware, okay? Those menus that I made, they are the basic menus to get you started. So if you do a lot of customization to your menu, and then later on you decide, well, I'm, maybe I want to go to the menu that doesn't have any icons. You're gonna you uh, you're gonna lose all that customization that you did. Okay, so just be aware of that. I make I make a note here. If you do a lot of customization, you might want to make backups of that. All right. The P menu start menu. That's what comes out of the box. That's what's on the panel here, and it's also on the XFCE4 panel. And there's also a full screen application launcher. I don't have it set on either of the panels. However, I do want to cover this. I have a special note about both P menu, the start menu, and the full menu or the full screen application launcher. I have a special note on how. I had to uh, basically they're going to show in the menu here under accessories we have the full screen menu and the P menu start menu I had to have them show I had to make a decision and right now they're showing in the menu and I give instructions on how to delete the not delete them but how to keep them from showing in your menu both menus are in this folder right here let me just show I'll show that to you real quick show hidden files go to local share applications and here's the full screen menu and the uh, P menu start menu and I give instructions very simple what to do how to stop those from showing in your menus but what you would need to do uh, 
or I'm sorry, the reason I did that is so that you can add one or the other to the uh, tent two panel. If you want to, you don't have to. You can remove you can remove this P menu start menu from the tent two panel if you don't want to use it. If you want to add it to the XF, if you want to add one to the XFCE four panel, all you would do is come to this folder, right click on it, and choose create launcher on the panel and it'll add it to the XFCE4 panel, okay? All right, I give some basic commands to get you started if you've never used NewTix before. I give you some basic commands on how to update your system and how to search, install, or remove packages, all right? But there's more to learn. Uh, by going to the NewTix website and you can also use the graphical package manager which is FL cards that's here on the panel you can use that to search install and remove packages alright creating a root user account this is very important in the menu under accessories I have customized look and feel as root which will allow you to uh, change the theme and icons used in the root account and PC man is root now both work the same you can open up your terminal and enter sudo PC man FM or sudo LX appearance and open those that way this this is just a convenient shortcut but until you create a root account neither of those are going to work for you but creating a root account is very simple. You just open up your terminal and type NU. Enter your password. Now the name of the root user, it doesn't matter who you are. <laughs> it doesn't matter what name you want to use. The name has to be root, R-O-O-T, okay, for the root account. So no matter what you want to use, you have to use that name, root. And then you will add whatever password you want to use for the root account. Re-enter it. And now we have a root account. All right. And hopefully, even though this is VirtualBox, uh, one of those will work. I already have GKSU installed, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, that didn't work in... Oh, it did work! Hooray! So as you see, the root account is set with a Dweta. The icon theme is a Dweta. And those are really the only two you'll have to change if you want to change the look and feel of the root account. So we'll choose Arc Dark, Apply, Icon Theme, Papyrus Dark, Apply, and that'll do it. Now anytime you open PC Man FM as root, go into your root account, that is the theme and icons that'll be used. Alright? The accessories in the open box menu. That's what I just talked about. I don't have to go over that again. I just covered it. Um, the other accessories, touchpad controls. If you need to turn on or off your touchpad or off while typing, you can do that on the fly. Now that can also be done in the auto start file. And the same with Compton. You can turn Compton on or off. Let's see if that works in VirtualBox. Oh, it did work. Okay. I do know Conky does not work in VirtualBox for some reason. But we have the shadow there. Let's see. Yep. The menu fades. All right. Fades in and out. I'm going to leave that on. And just for fun, just to see if it'll work, it's probably not working because... Uh, Conky is probably not working because out of the box it is set for two processors and I only gave this one processor 
yeah it's not going to work I'm not going to waste time fixing that real quick what I will do um, let's see let me move this out of the way here's what the conky will look like okay We've got some keyboard shortcuts if you are like me here in VirtualBox and you only have one CPU you'll need to open up that conky uh, cont file and just comment out one, uh, the number two CPU and then it'll start working for you alright let's see what else do we have here screenshots I added screenshots to the menu all of these including the print screen key on your keyboard when you take a screenshot it will automatically go into your pictures folder so let's just go ahead and try that I'll do the now open up the file manager go to pictures and there it is okay so all of the screenshot options go to your pictures folder now keyboard shortcut for opening a web browser now if you're at all familiar with Mio Linux Mio Linux is a very minimum and or minimal and base system you don't even get a web browser on it but I do have a keyboard short, uh, shortcut set up to open a web browser and it's currently set to open Firefox alright now if you want to use a different browser and there are several browsers available in the repositories uh, all you need to do I give instructions on how to change that again it's very easy and just like you saw in that conky a minute ago all these short uh, keyboard shortcuts are listed in the conky also auto start options please take time at some point to look over the auto start file let me open that up real quick all right uh, let's do that it'll make it a little easier to read I have Polkit known that will help you with uh, auto mounting USBs or looking at other drives on your computer uh, or partitions whatever you want to call it <laughs> let me explain how that works though um, if you open up your file manager first and then insert the USB you'll get a pop-up message to authenticate it you'll have to enter your password or if you put in the USB before you open the file manager it'll still show in the file manager on the uh, left left side in the panel and when you click on it then you'll have to enter your password okay and the same goes for uh, ejecting the USB if you right click on it to eject it you'll have to enter your password not a big deal alright I have this is set for the wallpaper here I give instructions if you want to turn uh, the touchpad off while typing if you want that to automatically start all you need to do is remove that right there okay or if you want it disabled completely remove that right there if you want the number lock turned on when the computer starts remove that one Compton uh, I went a little wackadoodle and included the Mio Linux startup sound. I wonder if this will work. I'm going to try it. I'm going to uncomp. I don't know if this works in VirtualBox or not, <laughs> but we're going to try it. Okay. I'm going to save that. Close it. I'm going to close that out because I'm going to have to log out. and we will see if it will play or not in VirtualBox log back in <laughs> well, 
it attempted to play uh, I don't know if you could hear it or not let me turn that up let me see if I can get that to play a little better for you this might be too loud I don't know all right let me pull up that auto start file again so that I can copy this open it up in a terminal All right, let's see what it does. <laughs> so there you go. There's the there's the sound you would be greeted with if you uncomment that when the computer starts up. And if you don't like it, but you would still like to have a sound play when you start up, all you need to do is put your sound wherever you want to and right here just put the path to the, uh, uh, the sound you want to use alright so there you go we got the turn on the panel now the panel switcher will overwrite this automatically with your chosen panel in other words let me close this as you see here it's set for the tent 2 panel to start up out of the box okay I want to show you that the panel switcher will overwrite the auto start file. Here we go to fashion mode. That's the XFCE4 panel. And let's look at the auto start file. Now watch it not work here in VirtualBox. <laughs> okay. Oh, see? It did. It changed it. There you go. So just keep that in mind if you switch panels it's going to overwrite the auto start file so that that'll be the next panel that starts up the next time you start up your computer okay uh, let's see oh dear I closed out my I closed out my release notes Where were we? Sorry about that. Uh, basic commands, accessories, screenshots, keyboard shortcut, auto start, sound. If you have no sound after installation, you might try this. If you right click on the volume icon and go to preferences, this may not work in here. You'll have some options here to choose from. Just choose your sound card and that should do the trick. Okay, Compton Compositor. If, you're, if you want to use Compton and it's not working right for you, I give instructions. It comes out of the box using XRender as the back end. If you're using GLX, I tell you where to change that in the Compton.cont file. I have two custom Tint2 panels and both of those use the calendar that I made out of YAD so the way that works if if you're using one of the two panels that I made you will left click on the clock to open the calendar there we go and to close the calendar you need to right click on the clock okay custom window themes I included almost all of the custom window themes that I've made since I started making Mio Linux and you can tell what GTK themes they match according to the name of the theme. They all start with Mio, okay? I'm not going to open that up to show it to you. It's in customized look and feel. You'll be able to find it. So just wanted to cover that real quick. Now this is very important extra applications have been moved to another folder and basically what that is the majority of those applications have to do with XFCE and what I did I created a folder let me go ahead and I'll try to show that to you of course I'm not doing this as rude I'm just doing it to show you um, Oh dear. 
hold on I'm gonna have to tell it to show the file system all right open that in a new window all right let's go to user share applications and what I did any applications that I I didn't want showing in the menu I put those I created a folder called extra apps user share extra apps if you want any of these items to show in your menu all you need to do open up as root and move them back into user share applications okay I hope that makes sense but that's what I did one other thing I want to mention and I'm not gonna do it here the full screen application launcher uh, let me go I'm gonna minimize VirtualBox I don't want to take the time to install this on VirtualBox and show it that way I discovered this when I was testing out uh, the ISO I installed HPLIP on another computer and what happened was <laughs> the HPLIP icon on the full screen application launcher was huge as you'll see here I went ahead and installed it on this computer too come on now I did click on that didn't I yeah oh no I didn't want to what did I do <laughs> full screen menu there we whoa look at that bad boy so I started thinking why in the world is that so huge <laughs> Oh, that's another thing. While I have this open, I move the close button into the middle. All right. Uh, you can't click on an empty space on this menu and make it disappear. If you open up the full screen application launcher and decide not to open anything, you'll have to click the close button here. But anyway, I thought, why in the world is that so huge? So, <laughs> so what I did. I went to user share applications and I'm going to do this as root so I can show you how to fix that. All right, let's go to user share applications and come down here to the HPLIP, right click on it, open it with LeafPad and look at here the icon user blah 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 it's saying use the 128 by 128 icon and I thought good grief man so I went to this I'm not gonna bore you with all that I'm gonna show you how I fixed it real quick if you go into these folders here on that full screen application launcher menu all those icons are uh, 48 by 48 and believe it or not, HPLIP does not have a 48 by 48 icon. It goes from 64 down to 32. Totally skips 48 by 48. Who skips 48 by 48? <laughs> so what I did, uh, I did try the 64. It was still a little too big. I tried the 32. It was too small. So I just commented out this line right here and I made a new line icon equals HPLIP save it and we'll try that full screen application launcher again and there we go 
normal size. That's crazy. I don't know why they did <laughs> 128 by 128. Good grief, man. All right, let's get back to it. We're almost finished. Uh, new ticks documentation. After you have installed a web browser, since there's none installed, please take the time to visit new ticks uh, documentation page. And I think it would also be good for you to read the handbook. Not a, not a lot of reading. Very well written and it'll help you out a lot. Special acknowledgments. Again, I want to thank Terry for all that he has done and not only uh, given us new ticks, but in his support of me doing this. It's such a, and when I say it's such a great system, I'm not talking about Mio Rowland, I'm talking about Nutix. He has done something fantastic here. All right, the full screen application launcher. I want to thank this guy right here, Misco underscore 2083. He helped me figure out what I needed to do for the full screen application launcher to close after an application opens. So thank you sir for all your help. It was actually very simple and I was trying to make it harder than it had to be. And for those who've shown interest in this respin, thank you. Uh, one thing I want to point out, I covered in the notes, if you do use the full screen application launcher, um, the way that works is after you click on an item, when that item opens, then the menu will close. So if you're, if you come here and use this application launcher and maybe you open up you've installed a, a web browser it might take it a, just a moment the menu will not close until another application opens so let me open keyboard and mouse also these are just single click okay see when this opened up the menu closed so all those items any item you click on just click on it one time and that's whoops okay virtual box bug click on it one time <laughs> and that's what will open up the application let's see is there anything else now I would do an installation you can do an installation in the live environment and I cover that in the release notes however I'm not going to click on this because I've already tried it two or three times and it eventually freezes here in VirtualBox it doesn't do it on actual hardware I'm not even going to attempt it here on VirtualBox okay but there's a difference in installing it from the live environment or installing it from the grub screen and for that reason I would I would encourage you to just install it from the grub screen because either way if you install it from the live environment you're still going to have to reboot your computer to finish up the installation if you want to try it in the live environment you're still going to have to in, uh, reboot your computer to go back to the grub screen to install it okay this installation does work from the live environment it's just a little bit confusing if you're not expecting what's going to happen and what I'll do I'm going to do a quick installation I say quick it's not near as quick in VirtualBox as it is in live uh, on actual hardware this is one of the quickest installations you'll ever do so what I'll do I'm going to go ahead and log out or reboot and I'll do an installation and I'll try to cover everything the best I can and try to explain the difference between uh, doing a an installation from the grub screen 
and an installation from the live environment. Okay, so let's do that. I don't think, oh, I wanted to show everybody FL cards. Let me do that real quick. FL cards is the graphical package manager that Nutix uses. And I want to explain something here. Um, here we have these two tabs, packages and collections. Now they've changed FL cards. At one time the collections were, everything was on one screen. They've moved collections to a separate screen. Now what will happen? These are desktop environments. Okay? If you come over here to collections and you click on that and you hit apply, it's going to install the LXDE desktop environment. XFCE, LXQT, MATE, KDE, GNOME. So you want to be careful. If you click on one of these and you hit apply, you're going to end up with that whole desktop environment also on your system. Okay? So the way this works, let's say you want a web browser. And here are some web browsers. We got Lynx, uh, Dillo, Epiphany, Falcon, Firefox, Midori. Got the Tor browser, Cupzilla, Chrome. Yes, that is Google Chrome. Chromium, Opera. I love Opera. And Vivaldi. So you can search for packages. You will right click on it when you see it hit install and it'll install it. You don't have to enter passwords or anything like that. If you've installed something, like here we have nitrogen, I can remove it. Okay? You don't have to enter a password. That's the way the graphical package manager works. Alright, let's do an installation. I'm going to exit this. Like I said, I, I don't know much about VirtualBox. I don't know if I reboot it, if it'll work. So I'm going to shut it down and just restart it. All right. And start. I don't need my face anymore, so I'll close that out. I don't need that. All right, for the sake of the video, I'm going to use the install option here in the grub screen. And this is going to take a moment. And for those of you who have never tried Nutix, you ought to try it. You ought to try it. I'm just saying, you ought to try it. <laughs> Come on now. Here we go. I'm going to choose my locale, which is United States. Now, very important, after you do this, it doesn't do it here on VirtualBox. You'll get a pop-up message that says you can remove the ISO now. Or something like the ISO or the live disk. It'll say you can remove it, and you can do that. What I'm assume happen is happening is that everything is getting loaded into RAM. So if you choose to install this, 
you see that message and you think, I don't want to do that, it's perfectly safe. You can remove the USB, take it out of your computer, and hit OK. All right, this is a very basic tool, blah, blah, blah. Now, I want to point out, um, they recommend putting grub on a separate partition. And I'm going to tell on myself here, I never do that. I don't put it on a separate partition, but that's me. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> All right. Now, what I would recommend is using the advanced menu. And don't let that scare you. This is very simple. Okay. I recommend the advanced menu. Hit OK. And here's what I do. If you need to create partitions, do that. And of course, I'm in VirtualBox and I need to do that. So I'm going to hit OK on partitioning. I'm going to use CF disk. I'm going to use DOS. I'm going to put new. I only have eight gigabytes. I'm going to make a one gigabyte swap partition. primary there at the bottom and I need to make it go over to type here on the bottom you see that moving around go to type and I'm gonna make that Linux swap now I'll move down to the next partition the thing on the bottom is already on new so I'm gonna hit enter on my computer it's got the rest of the disk seven gigabytes I'm going to hit enter primary type Linux okay and write it whoops write it um, you can put you can mark it to put uh, you can mark it for boot if you want to I don't do that never has had a problem so far but it won't hurt anything if you mark it for boot all right the partition table has been altered so we will quit this section go back to advanced go to format format a partition okay I want you see there it's saying choose the file system you want to use for the partition dev SDA2. I'm going to choose ext4. Yes, I'm sure I wanted to do that. Go back to advanced and do install. And what's going to happen, nearly all of these other items here when you hit install it's going to cover all that stuff all right now this will take a little longer in VirtualBox than it does on actual hardware so bear with me what would happen is when I was doing this in the live environment it would get stuck right here in VirtualBox, not in actual hardware. It'd get up to 66% and it would die. Or not die, it'd just get stuck and it wouldn't go any further. But again, that's just here on VirtualBox in the live environment, trying to install it that way. Now we're almost also to the point where I want to point out a difference between installing it in the live environment and from the grub screen and I'm hoping this isn't going to get stuck this way now if this ends up getting stuck what I'm going to do is pause the video and see if it'll come back
And excuse me for not talking because I'm kind of holding my breath hoping that this is going to work. I guess I should have tried this before so I'd know without having to test it on you guys too. <laughs> One time when I tried to install this from the live environment, it got to this point here and I waited probably 10 minutes in VirtualBox and it never would advance any further. So that's why I was hoping installing it from the grub screen would be different. So come on baby, don't let me down. Come on. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and hopefully it will finish up momentarily. All right. Uh, I stepped away from the computer for a minute and it did finish after that uh, stat, uh, after that bar finishes up. This is the next screen you'll be greeted with. Configure the boot of the PC. I'll say yes. And here, this is the difference between installing it with the grub screen and installing it from the live environment. If you install this from the live environment, this will be the last screen you see. When you hit OK on this, the installer is gonna uh, I don't want it's not gonna crash it's it's gonna disappear the inst the installer will disappear in the live environment and at that point you'll have to reboot to finish up the installation okay so this will be the last screen you see if you install in the live environment all right so I'm gonna hit OK we did this from the grub screen so we'll see what happens here Normally when you do this from the grub screen, it reboots like it's doing now. And we will finish up the installation by entering our name, password, setting the time and date and so forth. All right, change our keyboard layout or set it, not change it. US. Use the space bar to put a mark there and hit OK. That's already marked. OK. Yes. OK. OK. And enter our name again. Password. And the system is now installed and it will reboot into your, or not reboot it will go to the login screen and you will be logged in and you will have your new tick system on your computer so that's it guys I hope all this was helpful I'm sorry for the length but I hope maybe it will help you to have a more successful experience with your Nutix installation. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are. Thanks for watching.